Hello, and welcome to your 43rd SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca, and tonight I want to talk to you about using conversion functions, specifically how to convert data using cast, how to convert data using convert, and how to convert dates using the new SQL Server 2012 functions. Okay. So, to begin, um, conversion functions are divided into two categories, cast and convert. The primary purpose of both types is to change a value from one data type to another. Convert differs from cast in that it provides you with the ability to format the output of a conversion. SQL Server 2012 introvert introduces excuse me four new conversion functions number one parse number two try parse number three try cast and number four try convert and I'll be showing an example of each in the uh, upcoming exercise we do on how to convert data using convert okay um, something to note regardless of the type of function you can use the result resulting value in a variable assignment or as a value in a select statement. If you need a refresher on variable assignment, please see the tutorial I did on using variables. And I also did a tutorial on advanced data retrieval. That would be good to review. So now to start how to convert data using cast, go ahead and copy or type, I mean, this code in your query execution window and go ahead and execute it pull up the results here all right now what we see here shows the result set for this this query above here in this query the original values from the total do column were stored allowing up to four numbers after the decimal place by using the cast function, you can change the number of decimal places returned as shown in the total due cast column. In addition, instead of returning a date and time value for the order date, you can use the cast function to return only the date value which you can see in the order date cast column. Now, while the convert and cast functions perform the same primary function. The convert function offers some added flexibility over cast in that you can format the output of your result set using the style argument. You can apply styles to date, or time, or real, or float, or money, or XML, and binary data type. So, okay, hope that all makes sense. Now, I want to cover how to convert data using convert. So what this this is how to convert data using cast. Now go ahead and copy that and you can save it and use it at a later time. Now we're going to check out using convert. All right. Let's go grab that lock of code. All right. Here we go right here. Grab that, copy that. Paste that guy in. Go ahead and Type that in. Okay, now that you've got it all typed in, go ahead and execute. All right, now, what you should notice immediately is that the convert function accepts three arguments. The first argument is the target data type or the date type you want to convert a given value to. The second argument is the actual value that will be converted, and the final argument is the style. This final argument is optional, and if it is not provided, SQL Server will use default values. So what we see right here shows the result of executing this, executing this query, and the first five columns represent date conversions to different country styles. The last column illustrates the use of the convert function to add commas to a value that is of the money data type. In the query, the cast function is used in the last line of code to convert the string to money, and then the convert function is used to convert that value to that value back to a string with commas. All right, so now you know 
how to convert data using the convert function. So we've gone over cast, we've gone over convert. Now, finally, for this tutorial, let's take a look at how to convert dates using new SQL Server 2012 functions. So if you're somebody that knows SQL 2008 or 2005, this will be new to you. Okay, let's get rid of this. And let's go grab this block of code here. Copy that. Delete that. Execute. Okay. Okay, the query executed successfully. You see the result here. And uh, as I mentioned before, SQL Server 2012 introduced four new conversion functions. Now, parse and try parse are completely new to SQL Server, while try convert and try cast are extensions of existing convert and cast functions. You should use parse only when converting from strings to date and time and number data type. The other functions which are prefixed with try underscore add functionality to the base convert, cast, and parse functions. Converting a value using one of the aforementioned functions fails the entire statement. However, when you use any of the try versions of the function, a null value will be returned. So, okay. Now we already went ahead and executed it, and what we've got right here is a representation of the execution of this query. And instead of failing the execution of the query, the new try functions provide a more elegant approach in returning null values. See here. So, that's that. You now know how to convert dates using some new SQL Server functions. You've been shown how to convert data using the convert function. And you've been shown how to use the cast function. Thanks for stopping by. I look forward to seeing you in my next tutorial. And I'll be covering using string functions in that one. Thanks.